today we're going to talk about motion maps. Motion maps are a way of representing the motion of an object, um, kind of like a picture. You don't have to draw the picture of the car. Instead, what we're going to do is draw these arrows down below in order to represent the motion. The difference between this top set of arrows and this bottom set of arrows um, are that even though both are at a constant velocity because they're evenly spaced in the same length each time, the longer the arrow, the faster the car, and the shorter the arrow, the slower the car. And the very slowest you could possibly get would be to not be moving. So if you're not moving, what you would do for a motion map is just draw a dot with no arrow attached. That would represent an object that is not moving. If an object continues to stay at rest, it would keep leaking these dots, like these oil drips out of the bottom of the car. And so those dots will continue to keep going. Now those dots will not happen left or right because moving to the left would be in the negative direction. Moving to the right would be in the positive direction. And so these dots are going to stack vertically on top of each other to let you know that time has gone by. Each dot represents another instant in time that has happened. Um, so every time you make another dot, it says, hey, I'm still at rest, I'm still at rest, I'm still at rest. And then when you start drawing an arrow, the length of the arrow is what represents the speed and the direction on the arrow is what turns it into velocity. So now I'm moving to the right and if I make a longer arrow, I'd be moving to the right even faster in that positive direction. If I wanna indicate that I'm going at a constant velocity, one arrow is not enough. I need to draw at least two arrows. The longer that I'm moving at my constant velocity for, the more arrows I'm going to draw. So if I'm going to read this motion map to you, I would see something that started at rest for one, two, three, four seconds, um, and then it sped up, and it sped up some more, and then it turned around, and it maintained a constant velocity for one, two, three, four, five seconds. All right, so that's the idea behind motion maps. They're like a little picture to describe the motion of the object. Next, what we're going to do is talk about another representation for motion. So, um, I want you to notice that these are just pages from your packet. That first page that I was going through with you was page 19 of your packet, so feel free to read through that. Um, 19 and 20 are both just giving you notes about motion maps. And page 21, I'm going to ask for you guys to do... Um, the bottom two problems for homework, but I think I'm going to do the top two problems for you as an example. So it says for number one, the object is moving forwards, away from the origin. So if the object is moving forwards, I'm going to make that an arrow to the right. And because it says a constant speed, I'm going to draw equal length arrows, and those equal length arrows are all going to point the same way. It doesn't tell me where to start. I don't know where to start. I can start wherever I want to. This vertical line represents a position of zero, and so if I draw my first arrow starting at zero, then that's telling me I chose a starting position of zero. I drew three equal length arrows to represent a constant velocity, and the fact that I started on this vertical line means my starting position was zero. So on my position time graph to match that, I would start at a position of zero, and I would draw a nice positive slope, constant positive slope, straight line. That would say I'm maintaining a constant positive velocity with a starting position of zero. Now we're introducing this idea of a velocity versus time graph. A velocity versus time graph is going to be a flat horizontal line when you're at a constant velocity. We know that the slope of the position versus time graph is equal to the velocity. So this positive constant slope would be shown as a positive constant velocity. Now, let's say that you interpreted this question differently because it didn't tell you to start at zero. Maybe you said, I'm going to start here, and I think that we're going at a slow constant velocity. That's allowed. Then on your position time graph, what you would do is you would start up here with a y-intercept saying, hey, 
that the first arrow you weren't at zero position. And these are slower. So since they're slower, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a less steep slope. And then for our velocity versus time graph, it's still a horizontal line, but if it's a little slower, it's going to be a little closer to zero because zero velocity would mean at rest, and the faster you're moving, the further away from zero you'll be. To show the object standing still for number two, you can pick any location to be standing still. I'm going to pick some positive position. Now a second later, if I'm still still, I need to draw another dot. But these dots can't go to the left or right. That would be like I had teleported to a new position, and that's not true. Instead, these dots are going to be vertical. I'm still at the same position. I'm still at the same position. Don't do dots to the side if you are standing still. So because I chose to have a positive position, on my position time graph, I'm going to maintain a constant positive position. That position is the same the whole time. But again, it's the slope of my line that's equal to my velocity. And my slope here is equal to zero. So my velocity is going to be equal to zero. Zero velocity would show at rest. Again, if you really like everything to be at zero, that's allowed. You could have interpreted this problem as the object starting from a position of zero. Then your position time graph would have to be here. But your velocity time graph would still be zero. Notice that this velocity time graph doesn't tell me where the object started. It just tells me that it wasn't moving. When you look at a velocity time graph, you could tell how fast the object is moving, and you could tell which way the object is moving. But what you can't tell is where it started. From a velocity versus time graph, you don't know the starting position. All right, you will try number three and number four for homework, and the answer key is posted to the Schoology folder. We're going to do um, one last thing here. I'm going to show you again how to start page 22, and then I'll let you guys finish it. On page 22, they give you position time graphs and ask you to draw your own velocity time graph. This time you have to calculate a slope value using the numbers. So. This one, we go up four, so the slope is going to be plus four meters, and we go over four, so four seconds. So that's gonna be a slope of positive one meters per second. And what I have to do is mark that off, that that only happened for four seconds. So I'm gonna go over here to my velocity time graph, and I'm gonna do plus one, but I'm only gonna do it for four seconds. Now. There is a way of going from position time to velocity time, but there's also one last thing you can analyze on a velocity versus time graph. And the idea is that the area under a velocity versus time graph is equal to the displacement of the object. So. To find the area under this graph, I'm going to shade it in down to zero. And I'm going to say, okay, that area of a rectangle is equal to base times height. And so the area of this rectangle is going to be four seconds times one meter per second. And what I get is positive four meters. Again, I don't know where you started and I don't know where you ended, but I know that your change in position was positive four meters, that that area under that graph will give you your displacement. You will use that information to finish page 22 and then we're gonna skip to page 25. On page 25, you're going to plot this data on the position time graph. You're going to use that graph to make a velocity time graph. You will draw the motion map. Determine the displacement using graph B means use the area under the graph to find the displacement. So determine the displacement using graph B. Again, graph B is a velocity versus time graph, and it's the area under the graph 
that's equal to the displacement for a velocity versus time.